Welcome to SelfDiscoveryWisdom.com, formerly known as Self Discovery Media. On these podcasts, you're going to hear people who speak from the heart. They've taken the journey in life. Many things have happened to them, but they've changed it to happening for them. And in their strength, their courage, they've discovered their abilities and their wisdom, and they are now sharing it here with you. Do enjoy each show. We bring it to you with love and knowing that it's going to help you on your journey of life. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Building Your Business, right here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Angelique Williams. She calls herself the Swiss Army Knife of Business. But recently, she has been downloading a great deal of wisdom. In fact, they're very much knocking at her door. And she's kind of struggled with it, of what to do with it, until she actually realizes that's very much a part of her business, and uh, that being in tuned and receiving and uh, allowing it to take you where it needs you to go is actually what makes your business grow. She said that she's always struggled with her why. She thought that she was destined for one path and she took it so many twists and turns and she wondered why if all the luck uh, or truly predetermined to have unfold this way. I've always been a bit of an odd duck, she says, marching to the beat of my own drum. Through the experience of loss, I realized the sound of my drum was for the dreamers that wanted to make the visions reality and how to guide them on this path of success. So she calls herself the Swiss Army Knife, business consultant, business creative, uh, credit builder, recovering perfectionist and amateur comedian. And with a diverse background in spanning architecture, real estate, entrepreneurship, she's built affordable housing, started numerous startups, worked on other startups, small businesses to build businesses, exhibited Ford uh, under Ford's under 30 um, conference and was in Essence magazine. And currently she works to help business owners build their business credit in order to make their business reality without uh, suffocating under the personal debt. Um, and where was she when I needed her? I needed her quite some time ago um, because everybody that starts a business needs moolah in order to do it. And what do we do? Credit card it. Until all of a sudden the credit card is up here and it's like, but I'm not making even enough money to pay off the minimum. So we have an awful lot to talk about. The downloading of it redirecting you in your business and all that wonderful experience of it knocking at your door, but how it actually applies to business and how so many people that have the dream, that have the vision, I see it, I feel it, I touch it, just how do I make it happen? Well, that's where you kind of get out of your own way and let that divine show you the path, right? Welcome to the show, Angelique. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know, my <coughs> my bio, I always tell people that online me is way cooler than the actual me. I'm just I'm just a goofball. That's it. But I'm like, wow, that she sounds awesome. Like, oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it obviously is you because you don't get featured, you know, in Forbes or anything else without obviously having achieved something. A disclaimer, folks, both of us are suffering from various colds and viruses that were given to us as Christmas gifts. So if you see us blowing nose or coughing and spluttering, the show must go on. So just forgive that because that is what we do even as business owners, isn't it? It doesn't yep. matter if you're down or out or whatever's happening. You know, uh, especially if you're a solopreneur or entrepreneur of a small business, uh, you got to suck it up and step up, right? Yep, the show must go on. Yep. <laughs> I want to talk about your experience first. You know, we, we've talked about your business and clearly you're really well business minded and especially around, you know, that credit about um, do you wait until you have the money before you start the business or do you start the business slow and let the money come in, in to build the business? All of those questions I want to get answered. But I first want, because we've had a couple of chats now before we've done the show about how the universe is knocking at your door and you kind of, no, I'm not interested. Go away. And I always say resistance is futile. It's been knocking and knocking and you've been going, no, no, no. And it keeps showing you over and over again, are you paying attention yet? Uh, how has that experience been for you? Oh my gosh. Um, so I, I was told very early on that I have the rare ability of utilizing my left brain as well as I can use my right brain. So I'm very artistic, very ambitious, but also highly analytical. My analytical brain is incredibly high. 
And I've always relied on my mind, on, let me be more specific, on my brain mm -hmm. to get me to where I want to go. And, you know, I, I struggle, I talk to my therapist, I struggle with feeling words mm -hmm. and I struggle like knowing what's a feeling versus a thought. Um, technically they're both, but, you know, I, I think about myself and, and my path and the things that, because I'm highly analytical, that makes me hardheaded. You know, if it doesn't fit in my box, mm. it doesn't, it can't go, you know? And if it doesn't make sense on the plan or the path, I just feel like deviating, like even if it might feel right, it doesn't make quote unquote make sense. And so I always go the other way. Yeah. And, you know, there's this theory around deja vu that if you're having deja vu, you're meant, you're on the path you're supposed to be on, which is why they say adults have it less than kids do because we get sidetracked by yes. other things. That logic and, thing. <laughs> exactly, yeah, that logic thing. And for me, you know, loss has been uh, kind of the driver and sort of me getting out of my head. You know, I had two major losses in the past decade. Um, my younger cousin uh, was killed about almost eight years ago, eight years in June, this June. Um, and that led me off of my corporate path mm -hmm. into my entrepreneurial journey and starting my company and things like that. And what, what am I doing with my life? What am I what am I doing? You're redirecting. And about 20 months ago or so, uh, my mother passed away very suddenly. And that uh, grief is my greatest adversary. And you can't you can't logic grief. Mm -hmm. You can't logic it. And, you know, I spent, you know, 14 months in and out of like just serious depression around it, not really having a path, not knowing where I was going and just being anchorless is what I described it as, you know, it was just, I don't have a, I don't have a North Star, I don't have a compass, I don't have anything that's guiding me. I don't want to do any of this stuff that I previously really cared about. And it's, it's been a journey to be still and listen and sort of find my path. And, you know, I, I quit the job I was working at. They were very ter terrible about bereavement. So I said, you know, I'm out. <laughs> You know, the most important person I care about is gone and you guys yeah. are not important to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm leaving. I'm not going to have the stress. And for me, it's been sort of finding what do you do now? Yeah. I mean, obviously, every 90 percent of kids outlive their parents. Right. That's just fact. Mm -hmm. But and no one talks about it. But that is fact. And. That's how, you, that's how a parent actually wants it to be. Yeah. You know, it's the, the 10 percent that don't. You know, that's a very different type of pain for the parent. Yeah. But. We all know what's going to happen, but then somehow and your life is supposed to go on as yes. we know, but it's kind of like, what do I do now? Like, it's just, it's a very clear marker. That's everything can no longer be the way it was mm -hmm. that yeah. this, this life, this path, these things aren't forever. And for me, it's been, you know, finding what can you, what can you care about now? Not even what do you care about? What mm -hmm. can you care about? Because your perspective has shifted. And so things that you did care about a lot <laughs> no longer matter. And so for me, you know, my goal, the only list, and I love a good list, believe me, I have lists for lists, but the only to do for me in my life now is to be more like my mom. That's it. And she was a nurse. She was a pediatric nurse. She was such a helper. And for me, it's like the work that I do, I want to make sure that I'm helping people. Um, and so I don't think by coincidence, I found the company I work for now. J Gulf, but it's been yeah, through Bali, through retreats, through supernatural occurrences, through dreams and premonitions. It's been it's been a wild ride to to accept that I am not in control and that I'm here for a reason, a reason and a purpose, and it's only a purpose that I can do. Not to say that I'm smarter or more gifted, but mm -hmm. this is my purpose, and everyone has their own purpose, and this one is mine and just accepting that this is reality, even if it's not what I thought I would be doing. But I mean, surely you must have thought of that this is actually your mom, you know, using these channels to download to you and saying, you know, I'm I am honored that I meant so much to you. And and it's wonderful as a parent to know that, you know, that there is that love, but I am still in you. I am still with you. And um, mm -hmm. my purpose was nursing. Mm -hmm. Find your purpose and bring the same amount of passion to it. And I'm going to show you the way. Yeah, absolutely. And my mom was very soft-spoken. She didn't like confrontation. And so 
she's definitely, you know, in, in passing, she's used other people and other means that are much more forceful mm -hmm. than she would have been in person, you know? And so yeah. she's chosen people in my life that are very direct, that are very direct with me. <laughs> she's chosen methods and methodologies where I'm just like, okay. All right. But yeah, it's, it's definitely clear that, you know, well, she's saying, you know, you didn't die with me. That's not how it's meant to be, yeah. right? And you've got so much to give. This is just a redirect. Yeah. You know, you, we know you're capable. That's already been proven. But where's the passion around your purpose, yeah. right? And, yeah. you know, a lot of people that are very high achievers uh, think that is their passion because you're a high achiever. But when the passion actually comes from the heart and the soul, the very being of you, that mm -hmm. it's something that you have to do, riches or no riches, you are compelled to get up every day and do, then mm -hmm. you truly know you're in your right purpose because the passion behind that purpose isn't monetary driven. It's yeah. driven as your calling. And as it was her calling, she knows what your calling is and she's just basically been kicking you up the butt and pushing you on the right path. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. It's exactly <laughs> what happened and yeah, I mean, it, and that's what happens when you're creative and or highly ambitious. It's like, oh, I do this because I'm good at it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but do you like it? Yes. You know, I'm good at coding. I'm great at coding. Yeah. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. You know, no offense to any coders, but it's just not for me. Right. And, you know, when you are on that wheel, mm -hmm. you know, that hamster wheel of life or of ambition or climbing the ladder, whatever you want to call it, it's impossible. You feel like you can't get off. Right. Because we've already gone and we're already running. So like, I don't know where this is going, but I've run so far. So I have to keep on running. And I always tell people, I'm like, jump out of the moving vehicle. Mm -hmm. Just jump out. Yes. It's going to hurt. You need to scrape yourself. Yep. And you're going to be stupid and embarrassed. And you're going to limp for a while. But get out of the car. Yes. Because <laughs> jump off the wheel, get out of whatever you have to do. Mm -hmm. Stop the train, whatever metaphor you want. Because you're going to look up one day, you know, if you live to be 50, 60, 70, and you think, what have I been doing this whole time? I, I, oh, yes. I what have I been doing? Year. Yes. <laughs> I know that one. I had to ask myself that question. I started this path at 57. And it was weird how I got into this path. And I had no idea that this was going to be the path of accumulation of my experience of life and doing what I'm doing. And here I am with, you know, RSV virus and you're sick. And we do it because the commitment behind why we're doing it. it isn't fame or adulation believe me you don't get it it is about that commitment that if something you're sharing can pivot somebody in the right direction can comfort someone can give somebody an aha moment a pause to reflect on their own lives or an answer that they're seeking then that is the reason why we do it and we may never know what that that is right but it is that compelment to do it. And you're never, ever too old to nope. start that journey. Never. But it is the sole purpose. You know, you've you talked about, and I think COVID was a great gift in many ways. Yes, it killed a lot of people and it's economically shaken us up and, and an awful lot of stuff is happening because of it and a lot of excuses happening around it as well. Yes. Um, that's all aside. It was a time for everyone to pause, reflect and redirect and it was a time to look at why, you know, I can, I can finally stop and take a moment to really look at my life. And and do I want to go down this path anymore? Yes, I'm good at it. Yes, I'm making six fingers. Yes, I've got this adulation and that adulation. Mm -hmm. But do I really enjoy it? Mm -hmm. Right. And it's that kind of question that we don't allow ourselves. And I think any business person, especially going into business for themselves, the first question you need to ask yourself is, why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the answer is money, it's probably the wrong reason. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Because That's the only way answer. That is an outside living life, not an inside living life. We're asking people to do their business from the inside out. Yeah. Not the outside in, right? So, yes, if it's money, then you're clearly not on the right path. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean to say you don't want to make money because we all need it. And as you know, you need that credit in order to build a business in order to live. It yep. has its place, but it's not the reason, is it? Yeah, no, no, it can never be because there's no fulfillment in that. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, soul enrichment, right? Soul purpose enrichment becomes the abundance. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So now having taken this, you've, you've had your accolades, you've proven that you're more than capable. You've had your cosmic two by four, your mum going, come on, come on, you know where you need to go. You know, get yeah. out of the rational, logical mind, step into your heart and soul. You know it's there, trigger it, let it open up. You know, for you now, your business has completely changed in the way you are looking at your clients and, and the way you're showing your clients forward. Now, let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit around the credit because that is kind of your forte with uh, with the. Uh, how do you incorporate this kind of soul awakening in them and for mm -hmm. them to balance the logic, the rational, and also the, the beautiful divine essence of truth? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and I, and that's a great question. And, you know, previously to credit, I was working with startups and small businesses across the country with mentorship and access to capital and large events with Google Ventures and Visa and things like that. And, and it was, it was fine. Um, you know, I, it was a lot of type A people all the time, but it wasn't, I couldn't feel the changes necessarily, you know, like I'm giving you this thing, but I don't know if it's helping, you know, it might or it might not, but I can't really see what's happening. Um, and sometimes people are just, you know, thick headed and don't want to see it. Yes. Um, and, you know, with business credit, you know, you talk about a cosmic two by four, I'm going to steal that phrase. Um, <laughs> but I, but, you know, I think I have my own verbal two by four where I talk to them uh -huh. um, because quite frankly, to wake them up, I have to call them out. Yes. And but I call them out without calling them out. Mm -hmm. And I say, you know, the hardest part of my job, because business credit takes, you know, 10 to 12 months to build to really get to a full engine strength of what you want to do. But I always tell people the hardest part of my job is getting business owners to look up from the survival blinders they have on and look ahead and say, where do I want to go? What do I want to be happening? Because when you're in a business, again, you're drawing a credit card debt, you're trying to make the minimums, you're you're driving Lyft, you're doing Herbalife, you're selling insurance, whatever, to keep the lights on while you're running this business. And you're just so deep in the blinders because you're just trying to survive and scrap and claw and hustle because that's our culture, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that you like, let's back up. Let me give you a magic wand. Let's say I give you $100,000 in a year. What are you going to do with it? Let's, let's think about it. Because people will tell me, oh, in a year, I'll need that. And I'll say, in a year, you won't have the money. Mm -hmm. Because when you start a business, most people either have the drive or money or willpower to keep at it somewhere between six and 18 months. Something between that. But let's just say a year on average. At that year point, when your credit cards have become max, you've drained your 401k, you borrowed against things you shouldn't have borrowed against, yeah. you sold these things, you know, you refinanced your house, maybe, whatever it may be. After a certain point, you're going to think, is this worth it? Mm -hmm. I don't, I think I'm ruining my life. And I don't know if the payoff is there. And it's because fundamentally the structures that we are given as small business owners, as not the Walmarts and the targets of the world, it's meant to keep us in this space so that we do give up and that we just end up in debt. And then we end up, you know, the average business owner closes their business in the U S with $83,000 in debt. Yes. And that's a painful reminder every month of this mis quote unquote mistake they made because they tried to chase a dream and they never chase another dream mm. because of that pain. And so for me, I, I have to call them out of like, can you look up? Can you look up what what is it that you actually want to do besides hey you're hosting for me next month? And why I know do you want to do it? Like I know it's not what you're doing. Like what is it? Like what is the goal? Oh, you want to bring art to to underprivileged kids. Oh, you want to have you know a vegan leather so animals don't have to be killed for this. Okay, that's fantastic. So like how do we actually get there? Because looking right here straight ahead isn't working. So if you can dream with me for, you know, 45 minutes, whatever it is I'm talking to them, let's talk about how we actually get there. So I actually like, and it's funny because when I, because I never say I need you to look up. Mm -hmm. I need you to like look out of your blinders. The reason why I can't talk to you, Sarah, is because you don't have your, like, that's 
accusatory you know like that's yes. that now now i'm defensive yes but, exactly heckles go up once, yeah <laughs> right so once i say oh when i talk to business owners this is what they can't see you could see in their face they're like well why have my blinders on too mm -hmm. okay let me put them down and then the conversation opens but it's it's you know as you're saying you're so busy trying to make it work that you've forgotten why you're doing it or really what the vision is all about all right and then it's like as you said 18 months later in debt and and everybody's looking at you oh you're a failure you didn't make it work and uh you you can't be good at your job or you can't be good the vision couldn't have been any good and it's no it's because you actually weren't feeding the vision and the reason of why you were doing it in a practical manner and that's mm -hmm. the thing i think that people forget you can have the dream and it can be as big as the universe but how do you practically take the steps in order to manifest that dream mm -hmm. and as you said you get so caught up in just the the daily grind of trying to keep the head you know the roof over your head food in your stomach while you're doing this and mm -hmm. it's the difference between working um in your business and on your business isn't yes. it yes yes can you explain that to people yeah so in the business so in the business is, you know, I'm working on my marketing or I'm fixing my website or I'm taking sales calls or I'm having these partnership things. And it's, that's what actually makes your business run. I'm, I'm making my social media posts, but this is how your business gets visible, how you get clients, all the different things. Working on your business, that's, that's, you know, on the ground, in the trenches, if you will, right? We're down here, we're fighting, fight, we're making this work. On the business is, that 30,000 foot view. But think about when you're in a plane and you look out and you can see a lot of stuff. You can't see anything in detail, but you can see a lot of stuff. And that's where you go strategically. Okay, where do I want to go? What are my milestones? What do I have to do to hit this? And yes, underneath all that comes the tactics that get sent down into the trenches. But you can't see that while you're in the trenches. <laughs> right. You can't exactly. see the strategy. In the yeah. trenches, you're in a six foot bunker trying trying to fight for your life. Yeah, you know? exactly. And you lose sight of the vision. You need to be in the plane. Yeah. Even if it's just for a, a day, two days out of the week, where you're just thinking strategy. What am I doing? And a lot. The reason why a lot of people cannot be on business is because they're financially stressed. Mm -hmm. You cannot be creative when you're in a place of scarcity. Your yes. brain contracts. Yes. Because yes. it goes into survival basic instinct survival self-preservation <laughs> when when money is flush or finances are not that big of a deal you can be more creative mm. and you can do more and you can think beyond what you currently see in front of you and that's being on the business mm. um about six years ago i was given a vision for my business and i'm one of these people that then i have to put it into a graphic in order for mm -hmm. me to see it Mm -hmm. And through the last six years, I have tried various times to align with other people in order to manifest that vision. And it did not work mm -hmm. until the end of last year. And then last year, kind of all of a sudden, the vision it was everything you're trying to do. So the right people are coming forth. It's now time to take that next step. And so mm -hmm. in taking the next step, it actually is already laid the next step to jump to automatically and a logical step in doing it and it just it just like okay all right the vision there was nothing wrong with it it was the who what when and why mm -hmm. right who was going to join me in doing this when was it going to be done why mm -hmm. those kind of people and whom is it for and mm -hmm. and it it all came together and i think one of the big things you need to have um in, in business is persistence, patience, and resilience. Yes, and consistency. <laughs> and consistency. The vision, nothing wrong with it. I wasn't meant to go from zero, you know, to, to Z with it. I was meant to kind of go through the alphabet, um, yep. gather more things under my belt so that when the right people came, I would recognize them. And when it was more than one, two, or three, then, ah, now it's the time that I can put this together. And if we're so busy working the daily ground, we're not paying attention to those beautiful signs that are coming. Oh, mm -hmm. now you can actually take that step towards that vision in this department, right? But you can't see that if you're so busy in the mm -hmm. trenches. Uh, and you miss those opportunities and then you wonder why right. things aren't working. Right. 
absolutely. Or you, you know, you have the opportunity and you can see it, but you're scared. Yes. You know, and, and fear, fear and courage are the same thing. It's just the mindset slightly different, mm -hmm. you know? And so I, I saw something a few months ago, which I really loved it. It was like, if you can't beat your fears, just do it scared. Yes, I like that. I've just probably do done scared, everything man. scared. <laughs> I get to that your little kid, and you know, all your friends off the stair thing, and you're like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, but all your friends did it. Yeah. You're like, I don't want to not do it, so I'm going to go do it. Like, I don't, and as you're following, I have no idea what's about to happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, and that but, actually but, is yeah. entirely the premises of my life. It's yeah, like, exactly. You've, you know, you've been tapped on the shoulder. Hello, da, 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 da. Okay, I've got to go and do it. I don't know how. I don't know who for. You know, the first a podcast I did was live on a different network. I pressed all the wrong buttons. Everything mm -hmm. went wrong that could go wrong. And I did 13 months live and things that can go wrong live go wrong, right? Mm -hmm. As it does even when you're pre-recording, which I do now. And it's like, right. don't sweat it, right? Manage it, mm -hmm. manage it. And it's like, if we allow our fear to talk us out of it. And then that opportunity is gone, maybe forever. But if we go, okay, this opportunity is given to me for a reason, how about I just open up and trust and flow, go with the flow, allow, and you will see all the things that need to apply to it as you walk forward. But as you say, I've jumped into everything, probably scared, not knowing what I'm doing until I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you could even say, I mean, you know, I, I said fear and courage, really, it's really fear and excitement, you know, yeah. like, and you could say, you know, I'm going to pick someone, I, I'll, I'll pick something who's called this concert I'm going to, Nicki Minaj, okay, my, yeah. my friend and I, we're big Nicki Minaj fans, I live in Florida now, she lives in LA, and when the concert tickets drop, she's like, okay, we're going to either Atlanta or Barclays, like, she just wants to go somewhere for this thing, right, it's in April, and, you know, the day the tickets dropped, she went and bought them. Now, this is for a concert. It's for an experience. We're going to have a good time. I love Nikki. She loves Nikki. We're going to have a great time with Nikki, right? But again, these tickets, you know, let's call them $100. So I got to spend 200 maybe 250 with the fees to buy this thing. But I don't care because I saw it and I want to go and I'm going to buy it. And I did and now I'm happy. Exactly. And it's because I'm excited. Yes. I'm not thinking about, dang, Maybe I can't afford this right now. Right. I'm not, oh, I should, oh, let me back up. Let me wait and see. Oh, I don't know if I should go. Yeah. I'm not, you know, these are the exact same things. Uh -huh. But in business, when opportunities are presented, especially big op opportunities to go from scarcity to abundance, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, it's, you should take it, you know, like, like if, if we got to, if we got backstage passes, it's like, oh my God, that's amazing. You know, and it's like, you just have to pay 20 bucks more. Let's do that. That would be insane. Now, of course I would take it, <laughs> but yes. you would take that bet. But it's like, this is for a concert, an experience with someone I'm going to see once. Yeah. But for your business, you think a lot of people are afraid of failure, yes. which is natural. I'm, I'm so afraid of failure all the time. I worry about it. Not so much anymore, but I, you know, it's still there. It's always in the back of your mind. But a lot of people are afraid of success also. Yes. They don't know what they would do if they had $100,000 in sales. Right. They don't know what they would do if they had they, if they were able to hire a team of six people. Yeah. Like, they don't know what they would do if their product was in Whole Foods. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's okay. But if you have the opportunities that align, right? Because mm -hmm. when they come to you, you also have to look at the landscape, what's really there, and does it align with your why? Because if it doesn't, then no, you shouldn't do it. Exactly. I like, mean, you know, going, don't take everything. Doing something like a concert, the, the adrenaline and the joy that you got from that concert will now be poured back into every other aspect of your life. And right. again, we forget about that. No, no, really, it should be spent on the business. You know, um, this is just in, in, opulent and in, entitlement. Yeah, you're entitled to go and have some joy. Mm -hmm. I hate the word entitlement. It's not a word I like in, in the way that, people feel that they are entitled because yes. and and but we are entitled to be happy but that happiness is our choice right and if we're going to go and do something that makes us happy and I suggest to people please step outside of your business and go and do something radically different that brings you joy because guaranteed that joy and that adrenaline and that experience will come back into your business and blow it up <laughs> in a good way. <laughs>
A hundred percent. And, you know, and even, you know, I remember one day, this was years, years, years ago. I remember I was driving around, I was still living in San Francisco and I needed, I was, I don't know what I was doing out of the house, but I, uh, I was out and I was thinking, oh, I have to go back and have to work on this, whatever it was. I can't remember what it was. And I was thinking, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this. I just don't really feel like it. I'm like, you know, no, I'm going to go, I'm going to go sit by the water and I'm just going to chill out. I'm going to lay in the sun. And like, I didn't get out of the car, you know, I just put the windows down and I just laid there and I just like, this is what I want to do because this is going to make me feel better. Mm -hmm. And otherwise I'm just going to go home and I'm going to complain mm -hmm. and resist this thing for hours. And then I'm going to do it and I'm going to hate what I did because I didn't want to do it right then. Or I can go take this, these two hours and go lay in the sun. Yep. And I went and laid in the sun. I felt so much better. And then I came back and then I did the thing in like 20 minutes and I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> This is so much faster than had I sat here and like complained withheld, about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah withheld the joy that I wanted, withheld yeah. the peace that I wanted. And there's, I mean, there's a lots of times where I will, well, I will do that. <laughs> I try to do it with meetings, but with like tasks in general, I will push it off and say, "I'm gonna sit by the beach for a second because that's what I need." I do that with music. You know, I know that um i'm always behind because there's always so much admin to do here and i'm into podcast books now and producing a podcast book that's coming out in february and there's so much work to do but if i'm not in the right mindset i'm going to make mistakes so mm -hmm. sometimes I'm, I'm going to go and do something and a piece of music will come up on facebook or youtube and i go okay the next hour i'm just watching and listening to music that's all i need to do and like the back of the mind, but you should be doing this, no, disappear. No, I am right now. And music actually, what people don't really actually re realigns you. It, re it the vibration of the music and the frequency of the music realigns within you. And mm -hmm. then you can, ah, oh, I feel fortified now. Um, and you go through your task clearer, right? Yep. With more, more clarity, more efficiency. And you get it done before you know what, instead of begrudgingly. So if you feel begrudging about something, go and do something that brings you joy. And then when you get to doing the task, it's done before you know what. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't have a lot of time, you know, even if it's something small, uh -huh. you know, like there's a there's a clip. Uh, are you familiar with the kids cartoon Peppa Pig? My grandson of two and a half is obsessed. And I okay. came back from England with a whole load of Peppa Pig stuff. <laughs> Peppa is amazing. I love, I'm like, I'm so glad I wasn't a kid when this was out because I would be a savage, just like Peppa. Yeah, and I know he's, he's, it, yeah. It's, I love this <laughs> stuff. And it's, and it's great because um, there's a clip where on YouTube and if you just type in Peppa Pig whistle, it makes me laugh. And I know exactly what's going to happen in the scene. And all it is, is Peppa can't whistle. Mm -hmm. And so she's upset. And so she asks her mom to call Susie Sheep. And so Peppa's mom calls Susie's mom. They get on the phone. And Susie's like, what's wrong, Peppa? And she's like, I can't whistle. And she's like, oh, me neither. And Peppa says, oh, good. And she's like, not that, you, <laughs> like, not that, you know, you can't whistle. Like, bad that you can't whistle, but good because I also can't whistle. So great. Blah, 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 blah right? And so then Susie's like, what's whistling anyway mm -hmm. <laughs> peppa says it's when you put your lips together and blow <laughs> and <laughs> Susie goes like this and the peppa just hangs up that's it that's the end of the clip she just hangs yeah. up the phone <laughs> and you see the dials and it's just so funny i'm just like she's just like great you can't whistle i'm not the only dumb one and exactly. then she's like, oh. and she's like oh you can whistle let me hang up on you yeah. and it's for a kid's show, it's so funny and it makes me laugh every time. I can see it in my head and it just makes me laugh every time. And it's but that's actually like a, a small great, thing. Like, yeah. I'm really frustrated. Yeah. I'm upset. I'm annoyed. Let me go watch this, like, really silly thing. I know. And, then, and of course, like, you know, being a grandma, you know, it's six books at a time. And and he's not allowed to watch TV much, but every now and again, he can watch a Peppa Pig. For, and you just see him and the little face is smiling or he's moving or he's this and that. And he's totally engrossed. And it's like um, the good lessons in there. 
he has a Peppa Pig car. I mean, he's obsessed with yeah. it completely. But I mean, I'm all about children's books that are wonderful lessons because I also think they're wonderful lessons to us. As we're reading them to the child, it's a reminder to us and that the lesson that we're trying to teach the child, hmm, maybe I should pay attention to that one, right? Yeah. So, you know, sometimes just go and watch a kid's show, you know, reset yourself because yeah. you are adulting it. Yep. And, and you know, with the adult inning is the, the responsibility. I should be upset about this. Da, 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 da. And you go back to kind of that child level and go, okay, so what, you can't whistle. <laughs> it's no big deal. And lighten up, yeah. right? And and this is the thing. We get so caught up in taking things seriously. And you know, one of the things I want to talk about, which I know you must come across with your clients, is the pressure from outside. You know, other people, I mean, I still get it from certain members of my family. I'm not making money out of this much, right? I'm mostly being funded in it instead of it funding me. Um, and one day I just believe I will make money. You know, I will make money. Um, but it's that stigma of other people that, uh, you know, their their judgment of you or you're not doing it right or, or you should be doing this and you should be doing that when they don't even understand what it is you're doing. How do people deal with that? Because that outside chatter finds its way in like mm -hmm. a little worm. Always, always. And, you know, I, I always say, like, should is a dirty word. Yeah. You know, I should. Why? Yes. Who said that? Yes. Why should I be doing that? Yes. You know, like, like, oh, you should be married. You should have kids. This would make me so unhappy. <laughs> like, you know, like, it's the, like, just think of the thing you don't want to do and imagine someone said you should do that. Yeah. And it's just like, No. I would hate that. Yes. And and but why? Because like because who you are inside, your conviction, your beliefs, yes. your disposition, it puts you against that. Yeah. And that's not something you want. You want just naturally the opposite thing. And I, I get that personally a lot. You know, I get a lot of the hard thing is, you know, you, you said earlier, you know, you started your business and all oh, it didn't work and your failure, you can't be any good. And but also it's, you know it's the other side too when you're getting the accolades like, oh you're doing great you're successful it's like, but I'm not making money again I can really make the minimums I'm working like six like gig jobs like you know I don't do an Instacart you know just all these things and it's like you're a fraud inside yes and you know for me personally what I say on that is what my first company um I remember I was going to close it right before the pandemic and you know I was I was just done I was mentally done and pandemic came there was one thing I hadn't tried and I tried it. It was successful. I wound it down a couple of years ago and I'm comfortable because I left it all in the field. Mm. There's nothing that I, that I wanted to do that I didn't try. And I know I did my best and, and that's it. And, you know, it's, it's funny because circling back to my mom, I remember in class um, in school, she would say, you know, if you, if you get a, if you get a C, you know, or D and like you really tried, you know, you tried and that's just what you got, like, then, okay. You know, that's just not something that you're good at, you know, and that's fine. But if you didn't do your homework, you didn't pay attention, like, that's different. Yes. You know? <laughs> like, if you actually didn't do anything and you failed, you know, that's like saying, I'm, we're going to go to a bar right now. I say, oh, I'm going to make blind cars. And that's all. And that's it. Nothing else ever happens from that conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, okay, well, yeah, of course you failed. You didn't do anything. But exactly. if you go from a conversation to a back of the napkin drawing to some research, to a landing page, to a social media account, to some marketing efforts, to some prototype, to whatever it may be, and you get 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people to check it out, and it doesn't work, you've done more than 99% of people with an idea ever will. Exactly. Because most people... When they say, I'm going to go make flying cars, right? I'm going to go home and I'm going to Google this. And I see how much effort it takes. I'm like, oh God, it's so much work. And I close it and it just stays an idea. And so, you know, I'm big, I, again, I'm an odd duck. I'm big into etymology. And the etymology of success is actually to try. Mm -hmm. You don't know what so, you can do until you try. <laughs> it actually, so if you, if you try it, you've already succeeded. <laughs> yes. So that literally yes. is the etymology of the work. Yes. Is I mean, that yeah. you 100%, 100, 100, 100%. I mean, you know, this is supposed to say these shows are about people's courage, 
they're about the strength, they're about the, um, their abilities. And everybody will say, I didn't know I could do that until I tried, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't know I could do this until I tried. I failed at it at first. Well, so what? I kept trying, right? Yeah. And, you know, again, it's like the passion or the conviction is there. You will keep trying. And I don't believe, you know, if you land on your backside and you fall over and over again, I don't consider that a failure. I just consider those lessons. I've learned yeah. how not to do it. All right. Now yeah. I'm going to try a different direction. Failure to me is giving up and giving in. Mm -hmm. That is failure to me, but not, to, you know, you've got to fail a thousand times. I don't consider it failing. I just consider that trying a thousand times until I get it right. But again, if the why and the conviction is big enough, you don't look at them as failures. You don't look at them as obstacles holding you back. You look at them as lessons learned. Okay, that didn't work. I'm not going to try that. Let's how about it if I go this way. And and it's more wondrous and more creative because you know what doesn't work, but there must be a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, you know, it's hard to separate self from business. Mm -hmm. Well, you are your business. doesn't matter what you do. You are your business. Yeah. But, you know, there, there's there's still you before your business. You know, there was a you before is going to be you after. And it's when you take your identity. So when it just becomes that is it. Yeah. Like there's no, your title. don't exist outside of this thing. It's like, yes. mm, that's not true. Cause you started this business when you were 28. And, okay. Well, what, what were you doing for the other 27 years? Yes. <laughs> you just not exist. You just a vessel. What were you doing? Mm -hmm. You know? And so it's like, remember, cause you know, it's hard to take things, not to take things personally in business yeah. of like, Oh, I did this ad campaign. It didn't work. I guess I must be dumb. And it's, and it's hard because when you are high achieving, when you are ambitious, you're used to getting those, those signs of of good job good this you got an a on the paper you got you, whatever it may be you know you save for a house you bought it you 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 know you study for the test you got an a you apply for the school you got in there's there's always something that's telling you you did good you did good you did good so you're getting that gratification but in business it's a long game mm -hmm. and you go long and long and you try and you try again you're trying all these different ways and you don't get that gratification and then it just become in your mind it becomes a referendum on your intelligence, on your intellect, yeah. on your ability. And the reality is that's just life. Mm. And, and I remember, you know, again, my mom, the cosmic two by four, I remember when I was buying my house, actually, like I saved at a savings plan. I did that. I was going to buy my house. The house that I own is the fourth house that, that I bid on. The first one, the, they waived the appraisal contingency. I wasn't going to do that. The second one, we couldn't agree on a repair thing. The third they wanted, uh, we couldn't agree on the markdown for something that, I don't know, it was something weird. And I was just, I was talking to my mom once in the kitchen and, you know, my mom never yelled at me. I think that's very rare for a child to have never been yelled at by one of their parents. Like even when I deserve it, she's never yelled. It was very mm -hmm. strange. Um, Did she have a mama's voice? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when they suddenly yeah. change the octave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Suddenly becomes a baritone, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, she never yelled at me. And, and, you know, she said, you know, the one thing I don't like about you, and that's when I was like, what, what's, what's happening? You know, I was like, oh my God, what are, you, what are you saying to me? And she goes, you're so hard on yourself. You do so much and you're so hard on yourself. And then she's like, I'm like, no, I can't buy this house. I'm just dumb, blah, blah. I'm just going on and on and on. And she lets me do it. And then she goes, she looks at me and she says, Angie, you know, this is the first time in your life you've ever wanted to do something and you haven't gotten it right away. Mm. And I'm like, yeah. And that means I'm dumb. And she's like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> and she's like, there are other things involved that aren't just you. Mm. Like there's the agent, there's the seller, there's this. It's not you applied and you got in or you studied and you got that. Like there's other factors at play. So you can't beat yourself up because of other factors. And I'm like, yeah. I guess you're right. You know, and like, yes. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm still going to take a break on, like, buying a house, blah, blah, blah. And she said, okay, that's fine. But just, like, don't beat yourself up about it. And then I think it was, like, the next day I just woke up and just, you know, muscle memory, go on Zillow and I look. And I see this house and I'm like, all right, call my agent. I'm like, God, okay, let's just, this is the last one, okay? This is the last one. I don't want to do any more after this. And that's the one that I got. Mm -hmm. You surrendered. You, know? you surrendered. Yep, yep. Totally. I've just recently had to do that because um, I've had people ask me for my memoir for a long time. And it's rather daunting, you know, writing your memoir. And, and it's like, 
I wrote it over a year ago, but it took me a year to edit because I've been busy, you know, when I got to it. And, and my brother is a professional author and a literary master um, professor. And it's a, and he edited it. And I was expecting to hear all sorts of things coming back from him because my writing style is completely different from him. I channeled it, right? I just let it flow from me, let the fingers just come out. And I was really quite, quite surprised of his comments but I think he was also quite surprised of some things he learned about me and just this morning somebody sent me um, a text and I read your book and I was unaware of this unaware of that now I understand the work that you do and and it was I thought you know the book is out there I'm not going to chase who's reading it or how many people it's out there Right. Mm -hmm. It's only an ebook right now. I've got to format it to get it out in paperback, but I'm too busy with the other book that we're doing right now, the anthology. And so it's a, I'll get to it. And I wasn't expecting anyone to read it. It's there. And then yeah. to get somebody comment back and it's like, it's like, oh, okay then. You know, I don't offend anybody, <laughs> you know, and it, I kind of explained what makes Sarah tick and why I do what I do. And I think this is why I say, you know, you are your business because when people buy you, then they're going to buy from you. Yep. Anybody reading that book, they're going to know how messed up I am, but they're also going to know why I do what I do, right? right? So exactly. it's, it's, it is kind of funny when I'm very much about allow. You take your knowledge and your abilities, but you allow the universe to direct you where you apply it. This is why this is called self-discovery wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is different to knowledge. Knowledge is the experience, the data, everything that you've learned. And it's a big, huge database. But mm -hmm. if we get stuck just in the knowledge, it's rather like a hamster wheel going around and around. But yes, but what? What if? What if? What if? What if? When we have the wisdom and it resonates with the heart and truth and the spirit gets into action, the mind knows what it needs to know when it needs to know it. And suddenly the knowledge that you need to know in that moment is really relevant. Don't backtrack on it. Yes, but no, no buts about it. That's what you need to know right now. Trust that knowingness. And when you apply that, like you're in the midst of doing all of that right now, of all the downloads that you're getting, it's right. like, don't take your logic out of your mind. Take everything you know out of your mind. Trust the wisdom because then you'll know how to use the knowledge. And there's something so liberating about that, isn't there? It is. It's 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 scary and then it's liberating. Yeah. yeah. You know, like there's just a calmness of like I was stressed out about something yesterday and I'm like, you know, we've talked about Don. We've talked about Don before we we started recording and I said, you know, no, oh, Don'll figure it out. I don't yep. know. It's just not for me. Don Don'll know. I, Don I don't is know. her wonderful downloader. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Don that kind of hits best. her at the you know unusual times, but uh, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I guess Don is the uh, Jerry to my Tom, apparently, I guess. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> Jerry's always his Tom with things. So. But, you know, when, when my, one of the things that um, my brother noticed in my book is loneliness. And I said, yes, you know, I've always had spirit, never felt alone in my spirit, but always felt alone as a human being, as a yes. human, not a being, right, a human. And, and that kind of is kind of the synopsis of it. When you allow Don to partner with you, right and then that partnership is just so utterly strong in in the creativity in the clarity in again knowing what you need to know when you need to know it and there's something so beautiful to, in, in the sense that i am not alone i haven't named my spirit there's too many of them they just jump in and out but mm -hmm. having you know naming don and and going okay don what do we do now it just it's that beautiful wise spirit that you don't have to put on the payroll, <laughs> but the gratitude of we're in this together, that it's our achievement together. And I think if we allow that in our business, some people may call it gut instincts. Some people may call it intuition. It doesn't matter what you call it, but listen to it, right? Yeah, yeah because if, if you go against it, it will, it will pay you back. <laughs> yes. Tenfold tenfold Love. now knowing that and using don and your partnership in your business and we touched on a, a little bit about you know credit in business of how to build it if somebody you know has had this wonderful epiphany and that we've got so many solopreneurs out there right now or you know 
um, entrepreneurs with small businesses, especially since the pandemic, many people have started mm -hmm. online businesses mm -hmm. or they had a business that they had to take online. Yeah. Um, and it's, if you, you know, what would you say to them of prioritizing how they build the money up or where they put the money? Because an awful lot of people, I've got to have the flashy site. Um, and I say, yes, you need a good basic site. I go to people's site before I interview them to see if, if it's the kind of person I want to interview. Your mm -hmm. site must represent you, yes. But you don't wait for everything to be perfect before you launch yourself. Because uh, as you launch and you move forward, things will change on how mm -hmm. you represent yourself. So where would you say, you know, how they should start saving that money or where they should start putting that money first? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, because yeah, I, there's a funny story about a $1,500 L. Um, and it was because the original name of my company started with an L and I wanted a very specific font and the font was $1,500 for commercial use. And you know, I talked to my friend about it at the time and I liked it not to get it. And the name changed to start with an M. So, you know, I didn't spend it. I was like, and we always talk about, can you imagine you bought that $1,500 L? You can buy the entire font for one letter. Like, why don't you yes. trace the letter? No, it was, there was lots of things around it. But, you know, it's where do you spend the money? Um, I always tell people, you know, if you have an idea, the first thing, like, set up a landing page. Set up a landing page with a few lines of what, what it is. And a place to collect people's emails. If you can get if you can get people to submit an email address in there, yeah, you've got something. You know, like poll your friends, do some surveys. Like, there's things you can do for low cost to determine is this something you want to do before you go spend Google Ops money. Because that's then that is the true hard part of an ambitious high achiever is slowing down for the research. I just want to do the thing. I can see the vision. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be amazing. Blah 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 blah. blah. But did you, are you building something that you want mm. or something that people want? If it's for you and it's what you want, then that's fine. Go for it. <laughs> you know, like, but if it's, you know, like the founder of Ring Doorbell, it was because he worked in his garage and he couldn't hear the doorbell. Mm -hmm. That's why he made it. Mm -hmm. And other people wanted it, you know, and then he had to figure out what to do next. But, you know, I always say, you know, website, landing page, email, you know, small surveys here and there. There's some paid surveys you can do. You can ask questions. Um, I would definitely, definitely, uh, uh, warn against people that promise, uh, introductions or people that promise raising capital. These are almost always scams. I fell victim to this. So I'm very sensitive to this. It still grinds my gears to this day. Um, but you know, I would say, look at all the available resources, especially if you are in a what considered an underrepresented group, whether it be women, you know, uh, race, ethnicity, neurodivergency, there are so many different resources to learn that I would spend my efforts there, mm -hmm. learn and absorb. Um, when it comes to building your business and building up the money, obviously people are inside their businesses at different stages. Some may have $2 in their bank accounts. Some may have 10,000. I don't know. Um, but I will say um, that when I started working at Jay Galt doing business credit, and I've talked to a few of my friends that I was in an accelerator with, you know, we all said the same thing of like, hey, if I knew about this back then, we wouldn't have had to raise money. We could have just done our thing. Yes. And so definitely I would say landing page, market research, small testing, have a free call with me and I will tell you how to yes. do it, you know, exactly. because and that's, you know, because I for me, I will never hard sell anybody. I'm here to give information. And you can do what you want with it. But knowledge is power. If you don't know, you don't know. But I would say if it costs more than $500, whatever it is that you're thinking about doing to start your business, I would seriously question if you need to do that. Yeah. And in a cheaper way. If you see a product that you want to go with, go check somewhere else because there's probably something cheaper, better, just as good or add something else. So just... Check all your bases because we get so excited and like, oh, this is exactly what I want. I'm gonna buy this thing. And if I just gone three links down, I would have found a cheaper alternative. Yeah. <laughs> so just do your due diligence like you would anybody else. You know, like I would say treat treat your business like you're dating someone. Like really evaluate them. Like right. <laughs> <you're someone. laughs> right. Like, 
what are, the, what are the good things? What are the slimy things? What are the weird stuff? Like, what's stuff I really got to figure out? What comes naturally? Like, you know, you got to really think about it that way. And again, you ask yourself, why do you want to do it? Is it yeah. a quick buck? Is it something that you think, oh, I, I, this has made such a difference? You know, as I say, I interview people, it, it, it's made a difference in their life. So now they want to make a difference in other people's lives because of it, right? Mm -hmm. So that is, you know, the best teachers are those that have gone through it because yeah. they understand and they really know what worked for them and they want to share what worked for them. And it doesn't mean one size fits all. Um, I interview an awful lot of coaches and it's, you know, it is, that's the reason why I say to people, listen to the podcasts because you're going to know whether that person is speaking to you or not, whether you resonate with what they have to say, whether they have a service that's there for you at the time of need, right? That's part of your research, um, how many coaches I, I interview. So right now you're thinking 2024, I want to start my own business. I had this great idea. I can't see anybody else doing it. Well, have you researched, Google it for a start. How many people are doing it, social media, how many people are doing it? So many people are so scared to talk about it in case somebody steals it, right? Yeah. Well, you know, that, well, the, and the thing is, is uh, obviously don't put priority, you know, stuff out there, but, you know, put out there, would people be interested in A, B, C, and D and start doing your research, use your social medias for it. But do invest in a coach that's going to help you seed Right. Because if you seed right and you water and nurture, you're going to see your business steadily grow. And anybody that promised you six figures in six months, avoid. Yep. Avoid, and vet, please. Vet that coach, because just because they're working with C-suite executives, they're probably going to be $20,000. Probably not what you need. Yes. Like you want someone's going to be on your level. Like you want to interview yes. them. Like just because you talk to someone doesn't mean to go with them. Like I said, yeah. you talk to me. You don't, have to, you don't have to work with me. That's okay. We can just have a conversation. It's fine. Just like them. You, talk, you interview your therapist, you interview yeah. your coach, yeah. all these people. Um, and, uh, and there was something you said earlier that I wanted to like touch on. Oh, I'm so mad. I forgot what it was. It'll come back. Oh. It'll come back to you. It'll, it'll, it'll come back. But, um, and jump but yeah, in no. when it does. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing is um, I've had many, many people on finances before, but I've never had anybody about building your credit. And mm -hmm. when you think about it, in any business, we've got to know what our credit is. If we go to the bank with an idea, you know, you're, you're pitching to the bank for some credit uh, mm -hmm. in order to start the business. Or do you save for it? Or do you work at the jobs? And, you know, what do you need to do? Are you prepared to go through all of those grounding, foundational, seeding steps all right in order to do this because if you go through them and go oh, god this is hard i don't really want to do it thank god you didn't invest a lot yeah you didn't spend fifteen hundred dollars in an l you yes. know <laughs> 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 you know it, it, it just this isn't what, what came to my mind but when you talked about people are afraid to share their idea i've seen thousands of decks and uh, you know thousands of pitch decks the investors have seen thousands of them and, you know, every now and then I'll meet with someone who makes me sign an NDA and I'll sign it, you know, because I'm not, whatever, I'll sign it. I don't care. Just give you peace. During the meeting, I will say never give this to anybody. Yeah. Because they will know that you're green and they won't take you seriously. Yeah. Because I've heard so many ideas. I've never had the idea to steal it mm -hmm. because I don't want to do what they're doing. I could think that is cool. Oh, it came back to me. I got it. I could think that is cool, mm -hmm. but, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. you know, like or I think this idea is dumb but you can go do it like you know there's so many different things and it dovetails to what finally came back to me is people about sharing the idea people are so afraid they're so protective like yes someone's gonna steal my idea someone's gonna steal my idea da, 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 da. I tell every single business owner entrepreneur founder whatever they want to call themselves if you think that there is too much space that your space is too crowded mm -hmm. for what you're trying to do I challenge you to go to the grocery store and yeah. I want you to go I want you to go to the bread aisle what do you, you see over 40 different brands of bread right and it's all bread yeah and they're all there mm -hmm. and everyone has their specific type they like so if you think that oh so and so is doing this and they're doing this and there's no space for me look at the bread aisle just go look that's it 
that's that's exactly where my daughter is right now and kind of not that analogy but i need to share that with her um you know she's a mixologist she's been in the in the uh, liquor business for over 20 years and she's worked around the world and she's won many a competition and she intuitively knows how to design drinks for certain events or certain styles or certain uh, companies or brands and she wants to start going off on her own but she doesn't wear business hats and she's intimidated by it. but there's other people there's other people and I said no you're Tabitha you do it Tabitha's way what mm -hmm. makes you unique you unique to stand out and what do you need to do in order to, you know, to produce yourself as the consultant that other people want and mm -hmm. that's the thing is I think a lot of people are afraid who's going to want to buy from me I'm not important enough or uh, that so and so is more you know more uh, more popular than I am and it's like get that out of your head right what mm -hmm. is unique about you because that means that your loaf of bread has a clientele that is looking for that loaf of bread yep yep exactly King's Hawaiian man they got me if I don't see King's Hawaiian I'm leaving Mm -hmm. I'll just won't have it then. I just won't have bread unless I really need it for something. Then I'll go get some other bread. <laughs> right. But, but, you know, there's, there's always, you know, and, and it's, it's interesting because, you know, I've, I've always been the oddball and I kind of accept that. I never really know how I show up. And so I just show up, you know, like whatever, I'm just going to be here. And, you know, people will gravitate or be put off and whatever. It's fine. And, you know, I remember I was talking to a client, uh, I think it's about three months ago. And, you know, we sat down and she goes, you know, you know, we sat, we talked for like an hour and a half and, it was, you know, great person. And at the, at the end of it, she goes, you know, I realized in talking to you that I talked to somebody else from J. Gall before, but I had no idea, like, you guys were even selling the same thing. Mm. And he's like, because like, I bought you, like, like yes. you said, like, yes. your story, like, what you're telling yes. me, like the way you told it to me yes. made it make sense. Relatable. Every, mm. And everybody has their own yes. thing. The way that I say it may work for some people. Other people, they're like, what? I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. But if I break it down in golf strokes or cigars, maybe that may work for you. I don't know. You know, yeah. who knows? But everyone has their own sort of thing. Just like therapists, they, yes. they all learn the same thing. It's you know, they hard. might have to and, and dip, but you know, different modalities, but it's like, it's their approach. It's the way they talk, the words they use, their time of day availability, you know, just whatever, the way that you vibe, it's, there's, you know, again, back to relationships. There's someone for everyone. Exactly. You want someone, someone you can resonate with. with. Exactly. There's someone yeah. out there that resonates with your product. Yeah. Whether yeah. you find them or not, it's a different story. And, you know, success is the combination of, you know, luck and determination. You know, like, yeah. it's like you have to put in the work, but you also have to have the right circumstances occur, you know, but if you're not doing either, it's not going to happen. And so, you know, some people get better breaks than others, but there's, eight, I guess at this point, at the time it's recording, there's 8 billion people on the planet. Yeah. Statistically speaking, it is impossible that not a single soul resonates with what you're doing. Right. Impossible. impossible. And not. also, also impossible that you're going to please uh, and be a product for everybody. Correct. Impossible, right? So Correct. it is your niche marketing from what it is that you're serving, right? McDonald's has its own clientele, right? There's a five-star Michelin restaurant has its clientele. Yeah. What is your clientele? And that yeah. is going to come from how you present yourself. Again, your why, why are you doing it, right? I truly believe I am more enriched and more abundant myself and who I am in doing the work that I'm doing because I learn as I do this. And if you can look, don't lord over someone, but share with someone, then that relatability then creates a yep. connection. Yep. And because you want to have a relationship with your coach in a way that you feel this is a friend. This is somebody I can trust. This is somebody I can go to. Yep. Right? And if you've Absolutely. got that relationship, then you know you've got your Don or you've opened up to your Don. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah no, and it's, it's, it's always back to the why. It's, it always goes back to that. And just, you know, again, you have, you have to marry the ambition with the creativity, with the logic, with the why. 
you know, with the how it, they all come together, you know, it's the who, what, where, when, it's all the things together. It's never just, we always chase the one, Yes. you know, which is just the doing, but it's just what's happening around you. Yeah. You know, like what's, what's going on? Like, what are you missing? Like, what do you know, just all of these things, because again, we get, so those blinders come on and they're strong once they're on. If you're like me, if you get locked in, you're like, no, I can't see anything else, can't do anything else, can't do anything else, can't do, you know, and it's just, sometimes that's needed. Yes. You know, yes. for a spell, sometimes you have a deadline or whatever you need to hit and you got to be focused, but you can't live like this because no. first of all, you're not living. And as someone that has deprived myself of lots of joy, like <laughs> take them off. But it's like, you know, I always, I compartmentalize myself a lot. And so I always tell myself, okay, like crazy Angie has to come out for like, two days I just gotta focus and at the end of these two days you gotta go away because this is not sustainable you know <laughs> like mm -hmm. you gotta go over here until I need you again yes like now I, I need to be chill I need to be zen we have work-life balance but like when I need to be crazy I'll bring on the crazy mm -hmm. no I turn it off yeah because going 100 miles an hour constantly no. is not the way and you know so you know having many faces to your persona it doesn't mean you're being fake or untrue to yourself it just means you have many different hats for many different situations right. you know like when i've got my eight month old grandson and my two and a half year old grandson sitting on my lap i'm goo goo gaga ring pulling all sorts of faces and sounds to make them laugh right and then my kids are laughing at grandma doing this right so yeah. am i going to pull the same faces and google gaga here no <laughs> and it's not similar from your different person no. as when you're being a mom when yes. you're being a grandma when you're being a friend when you're being a sister when you're being a girlfriend or a wife or whatever yes. or a, yes. or an employee or a, or a ceo like these are all different versions we don't give yes. them names but no. like we're shifting constantly depending on the situation on and it's an external thing Mm -hmm. but it's like when we're being interim we have to remember like we can turn these hats off like we don't always have to be this version I remember this specifically I remember it specifically when I started doing this it was January no pause I lied it was no it was January 2019 because I already made the decision it was January 2019 I think I probably bought this ticket in like October or November before then um but I had to go to a conference in Detroit in January and it was a week before polar vortex was coming and I remember just thinking, I don't want to go to Detroit. Why? Oh, it's going to be terrible. And I was just thinking about this. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, you know what? Me, the person, really doesn't want to go to Detroit. Like me, the CEO, knows I have to go to Detroit. And I'm like, how come that version of me gets to make all the decisions? <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I need to make more decisions. And, you know, that's how I started just, like, birthing the different sides. Because I was like, Who's running the show here? Because the CEO version of me wasn't always. And yet she makes 100% of my decisions. She yeah. has for the last three years. What's going on? You know, like, you need to take a break because you can't run my life. So but that's, that's there are times, though, that it needs to step in and say, look, I'm taking control here because yeah. you're just trying to abstain. And then when we do go, you know, it, 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 there's maybe just one thing that happens. And that one thing is all that needed to happen at that point, yep. right? Yep. And then you go, yep. okay, okay, I understand why I needed to be here. Yep. So sometimes we have to step outside of our comfort zone. And, you know, some people go, but why do I need to do that? What's come, what am I going to benefit from it? And it's, uh, why are you looking at the benefit from it? Just go and have the experience of it. Yeah. That will be where the benefit comes from. Yeah, and someone's talking about the balance of if you pick up one end of the pen, you also pick up the other. So there's yeah. always two sides of yes. what's the benefit of me stepping out of my comfort zone? What's the consequences of you staying in it? Yes, yes. Like life will be exactly the same as it is right now. And if there's something that you're unhappy with, then it's going to remain that way because you're not moving. No. Like you're staying still, which means nothing will change. Right. Life around you will change, but fundamentally your life will not change because you're not doing anything different. And so some that, people... Yeah, go ahead. that's totally fine. Yes, I can attest to that. As I said, I used to be the hair, get to the finish line. I had a vision and I wanted to see it into fruition. Yeah. Come on, everybody, ba 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 ba. I've now become the tortoise because yeah. I realized with the tortoise, the gathering of the people that I need in order to make that vision happen and the expansion of it, because I'm not a, an ivory tower person, I'm a hands around the world person. 
yeah. right? Lock in arms. Let's do this together. Let's have a ripple effect. And you can only do that with patience and persistence and resilience and yeah. understanding why you're doing it. So I've been 10 and a half years with my own network and April will be 12 years of, of podcasting. And some people would go, but you don't make money out of it. You can't be successful. I don't look at my success base that way. I look at my success on how many impact lives have been impacted from it. And if it's one person that's been impacted by a show, I've done my job. Thank you. Hallelujah. Right. Yep, exactly. And that's the thing is stop measuring and comparing by somebody else's expectation. Please. The sin of comparison is deadly. That is the eighth deadly sin, the sin of comparison. Yes. That is. That will or, eat compete. You or compete with somebody else that's in a totally different league to you. If you're competing and comparing, I'm going to be bigger than them. I'm going to be better than them. I'm competing with them. Then you aren't doing it for the right reason. Yeah. And there's there's a, such a thing as unfair comparisons. Mm. And like, for example, I'm 34. I was born in 1989. You know who else is 34 and born in 1989? Adele and Taylor Swift. Uh -huh. So if I were to be like, oh my God, I'm 34 and they're doing, first of all, pause. They yes. have different talents. Yes. They have different talents that are celebrated worldwide because yes. that's that's what we commodify is music. But like they have singing ability. They have they have the connections. They have this. They have a team. They've all I can't compare myself no. to a multi-million dollar international singing sensation mm -hmm. because I'm not aspiring to be a multi-million dollar international <laughs> singing sensation. Exactly. It's not my aspiration in life. You know, but like we've also got to look at that the fact that they are, the burden and responsibility on their shoulders now. Yep. You know, you're looking at the fame and the glory and thinking they're rich and they've got all the limelight, but you're not looking at all the, the responsibility and the burden that they have now to not only sustain that, but not to let their public down. Yep. Right. And, uh, and all be manipulated yeah. by anyone else. Look at Taylor Swift, for instance. Her whole um, uh, music catalog was completely sold off. So what mm -hmm. did she do? She recorded every single one of them under her own label. Yep. She could have given up or given in or been mad or sued. No, she went about and took charge. Right? Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Yes. So, exactly. you know, you have to be ready to bear the, you know, it's like Spider-Man with great power comes great responsibility. Like that's just the reality. Yeah. And, you know, and when you do build your business and you do get to that success point, you know, you do worry about that, like your image and all that. But like, again, Win, lose, or draw, as long as it aligns to you, mm. them's the breaks. Yes. You know, like, it's just life. It, it's going to happen. It's it's going to end. We're going to pay taxes. That we're all promised. You know, everything yes. else in between is happenstance. In, exactly. Know? Now, somebody, know, somebody starting off, um, I've heard some people say, you're starting a business and you're doing your research and you've got an idea, don't tell any relatives, don't tell your friends, just go and do it, get to a level where then you can say, here I am, because they won't try and talk you out of it. What do you say to that? I would say, know your audience, know who to go to, because yeah. there are voices that you know, anything else you try to do, they're negative, this and that. If you have a supportive friend, if you have a supportive family member, talk to them and only them. Yeah, those yeah. other negative Nancys, like they're going to be negative Nancys no matter how successful you are. Yes, like I would just say, talk to the people you can trust. Talk to people that uplift you. Talk to people that support you. But again, other people, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to see your vision. They may not support you. They may not buy your product. People that don't know you will tend to help you a lot more than people that you've known forever. And there's some psychology behind that, but. Truth of the matter is, if you have those trusted souls, go to them because you talked about loneliness. It is a lonely experience. Yes. Yes. If you have a co-founder, great. If you're a solopreneur, even worse. Like it's still lonely. It's a lonely experience. It's a choice. Yes. This is a choice that we are all taking that is makes us different. And only if you have taken this choice do you understand the pain and the stress that it takes. And it is a, it's incredibly lonely. Yeah. And the more responsibility you take, the lonelier it gets because you don't know who to trust. You don't know who to talk to. And I'm fortunate enough to have a good circle of people that I know. OK, I'm feeling this way. You know, I mean, I mean more, more my woo, woo stuff. OK, so these are the friends I talk to because they because they speak in that language and they can hear me and receive what I'm saying. 
But my other friends, they're like, that's crazy. You're being ridiculous. Like, that's not what I need. And I know that's what they're going to say. Yes. So even though I want to talk to this person, they're not who I need. And that, and that speaks to your comfort zone. If yeah. everyone in your comfort zone will not support you or does not support you, you got to go find a different zone. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's like wearing the different hats. Uh, I've got some hats that I wear. Then, quite honestly, I don't wear that well. Right? But I, I just, you know, I do the very best I can. Yeah. And don't measure your best against somebody or somebody else does it better. Well, they may have a full team behind them. Yeah. Right? And you're doing it yourself. And, you know, it's um, it's about what you're putting. I don't have the best side. I don't have the best this and that. But what I do have, is 3,400 shows of wisdom all under one umbrella, right? That I can brag about of the amount of wisdom that you're going to find here with people like you who have been through it, who are doing it, who understand the importance of what you are doing and this is your why. And that's the thing is, is I can compare sites. I, I've even hired people to change my site. And every time they changed it in their image, not yeah. in mine, and I ended yeah. up going, okay, I'm just going to completely do it myself and my image. It may not be perfect, but I have to be true to my signature, my vibe, my frequency in order to attract the people that I'm serving. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm misrepresenting myself, right? So mm -hmm. always be true to who you are and why you're doing it and whom you are doing it for. 100%. 100%. So what... Uh, wonderful advice you would have before we give all your links what wonderful advice would you have in closing out today oh man my advice my advice my advice my advice would be if you ran into your eight-year-old self would they be proud of you Mm. would they be happy with the life that you're living and does it line up with what that kid wanted right. and sometimes things change but if you're like i would be embarrassed or ashamed to, to meet my eight-year-old self and tell them what happened you know recess yes there's a, yes. There's a picture, uh on my wall over here um and it's the only known studio picture uh, you know, like the where you pose for the photos of my, myself, my mom, my sister, and I'm probably four or five in this photo. And my brother-in-law, he'd never seen this photo. And so I got I got a big print of it, 24 by 36, and I got one for my sister for Christmas, uh, two Christmases ago. And my brother-in-law saw it, and he goes, he's such a joke, and he goes, who's that little kid? I'm like, that's me. And he's like, he looks so sweet and innocent. What happened to you? I'm like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Okay, we're world hardened pie leave me alone yeah. and you know but it's i i have to pass this photo so you get to my room you know from you know from my kitchen from the door i have to pass this photo and every day i pass it i look at this kid and i'm like all right kid you know we're gonna today wasn't that great of a day we're gonna try again tomorrow or like we're gonna make you proud or like or some days i'll have a good day and i'm like yeah kids like we did that huh <laughs> like that was pretty cool and so you know it's so hard to, when you're ambitious, when you're creative, it's so hard to look away from where you want to go mm. and look back to how far you've come. Yes. Because granted, I would have never thought I'd be in this position a year ago, two years ago, whatever. But the life and the things that have happened, not the accomplishments and the accolades, but just the, the things that have transpired. If you told me that this, 10 years ago when I shifted into real estate development because I couldn't design anymore because of my hand and all this stuff has happened, I would have been like, no way. Like even the bio you read, I was like, oh, she sounds cool. I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> that was, you know, I was just out here. I was just out here doing my thing. And these things happened along the way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just, just always think about whatever you want to say, your six-year-old self, five-year-old, 10-year-old, whatever self that you think about that dreamt of, adulthood you know and, and created a vision you know you're still that kid you know you're, you're still that kid and you still have that ambition and that joy and you know I, I wear my high school ring every day 
I got it in 2006, it's $300 and I didn't want to lose it because it's $300. <laughs> but then, uh, money it back then. Yeah. Yeah. Like but I keep it on because when I got in, when I went to grad school at Columbia, when I got in, people acted different. When I presented at Forbes, people acted different. When I, things different things happen, mm. people move differently around me. And nothing about me changed. I was still an odd little duck just quacking around, you know? <laughs> but I, I, I keep it on because it's just to remind myself of like never forget you were that weird kid and it's okay and, but it's okay because we're okay with who we are now but don't forget because when you separate yourself and you start living in the accolades and the vision and what people say you are that's when you lose yourself when you kind of go on a different path yeah and so i always keep this ring on because i'm like odd ducks fly together Yes. That's what I think. <laughs> yes. I mean, I've always been different. The oddball always been yeah. that way um, in my family and in society and everything. And I used to be upset that I was different. Um, I was always brought up because of illness and other things that least likely to succeed at anything. And mm -hmm. then it used to bother me that nobody thought I could succeed. And then I realized it was an advantage when people don't expect anything from you. They become surprised when you actually achieve anything, right? So the pressure was off me. I could just do my thing. But if I failed, they expected it. If I didn't fail, I, then suddenly I surprised them. So it's it, it, put the chatter away, okay? And go back in to that child. What was the passion? Again, so many people I've interviewed that you know, CEOs of a company, Fortune 500s and this and that, walked away from all of it to go back to the childhood passion. Yeah. Right? That they really, what they wanted to do when they grew up. And that's what they have uh, set up to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they should be doing this and then you went over here. Yes, exactly. And then pivoted back to the passion. Yep. And made that their why. And that's the important thing to do. So how do people get hold of you, love? What's, um, what's the best way? And what's your site? What's, uh, and what's the way to get hold of you? Yeah, yeah. The best way. So, I mean, the website for the company is uh, jgalt.io. It's the letter J like John, G like giraffe, A-L-T like Tom, uh, dot I-O. Um, for me personally, uh, my handle on Instagram is North of Oblivion. It's one word. Uh, just N O R T H O F O B L I V I O N. Jesus, I know how to spell oblivion. I've been writing it for. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Very you know, and that was that that uh, that handle is a callback to uh, when I was a depressed teenager, and I the show I love is called South of Nowhere, and um, it's a great show. If you watch that show, Splashly Forever, great show. <laughs> um, but uh, I always said North of Oblivion because if I'm North of oblivion, meaning not dead. Yes. Not a shot. So right. there you go. Um, and you also you, have another site? Uh, yeah. So uh, just um, uh, the iam.angelique.com site. Um, or if most people want to text me, they can text me at 510-833-6429. Emails awilliams at jgalt.io. But anywhere you find me, I'm happy to reach out, happy to chat. Knowledge is power. Odd ducks fly together. <laughs> Exactly. And very often when you have an idea for a business and it doesn't fit mainstream, you know, you want somebody that isn't mainstream to be guiding you, right? Yeah. Who understands the mainstream platform, but knows how to take you quacking in a different direction. Right. Because, you know, that's the, the important thing is, is that we measure ourselves up against the people, you know, six figures, I'm successful, bestseller, this, that, etc. And it's like, and you look at them, and you're going to intimidate it, but I can't be like you. Well, no, that's not the person you go to. You go to the person, I've had my struggles. I've had my blockages. I've had my redirects. But this is the passion of why I'm doing it, and I'm here to help you. That's the person that you want. Right, exactly, exactly. But thank you so much. appreciate all of our myriad, twisty, turny conversations of mixing business and self and person and, and Don and two by fours and everything else. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, here, we're here all, every single one of us to have um, a purpose. And it's, I was watching a great interview to watch is Jay Shelty, uh, Shetty with um, uh, Trevor Noah. 
Uh, and Trevor Noah is just so profound in that. I love him. I'd love to interview him. Uh, but Jay Shetty, when he was asked, what's your purpose? He said, my purpose is exactly what I'm doing, interviewing. This is whatever's going on in my life. When I am interviewing, I'm in my purpose. I'm in what I was called to do. And I feel the same way because I bring people on like you who have taken your journey, your experience, your life pushbacks, your life abundance, and you're now willing to share it with other people in order to ignite their own beautiful spirit into being what their abundance is. So thank you for being willing to take your journey and it's ups and downs and it's ins and outs and it's two by fours and everything else and allowing Don, the wonderful spirit downloader, to guide you along the way because, you know, that's the beauty of life. You never know what's going to show you a different path. And we can resist, but resistance is futile. If we're meant to walk it, we've got to walk it, yep. right? Absolutely. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing. And to everyone else out there, you've got an idea. And no, it's not silly. It's not stupid. If it really gets you up in the morning, if it makes you feel like you're a driving force, please follow that path. But reach out to Angelique to find out what do you need to ignite that dream into fruition, into being actual, because you really do have to have the practical side of things as well in order for that dream to come true. So reach out to Angelique. Until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. There are so many more for you here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. Just go to the podcast tag at the top there and you will see all the many genres and all 3,000 shows ready for your listening. We are here to serve you, to help you on your journey of life. And we know that through inspiration, it begets invitation. We are supported by you, the listeners, and those that we interview. Anything that you can spare us in donation would be greatly accepted and we do hope that you enjoy the next show.